As we are coming on the air, we are about to hear from the California governor, Gavin Newsom, set to speak with members of the media. You see that live on the left side of your screen as he visits Monterey Park, the latest city in this country to be devastated by gun violence. We are just learning in the last couple of minutes that yet another person has now died. Somebody who was being treated for their injuries did not survive. That brings the number of people killed to 11. A number of other people heard after the shooter on Saturday stormed a ballroom dance hall and opened fire. We are watching this news conference that we think should start any minute. We're going to bring that to you live with more on what we're learning today about who these people are, who these victims are. The investigation into this alleged shooter, his motive, after he died by suicide on Sunday as police closed in. I'm Hallie Jackson in Washington. Let's get you right out to California now with NBC News correspondent Josh Letterman, live for us in Monterey Park. Justice and intelligence correspondent Ken Delanian is with us as well, along with former federal prosecutor, Georgetown law professor, and MSNBC legal analyst Paul Butler, who is joining us too. Josh, let me start with you and some of the key questions that are still outstanding about what happened here, what we know, and what we don't know. Well, a key question, of course, how the victims who were transported to the hospital are doing. We just got that news, as you mentioned, Hallie, uh, that an 11th victim has died. That person had been transported to the hospital to Los Angeles County USC Medical Center, a level one trauma center. Uh, according to the hospital, that person, unfortunately, has succumbed to their injuries, which brings uh, to now 11, the total number of people dead in this mass shooting. According to hospital officials, they say that one patient who is at that hospital remains in serious condition and they are treating uh, two more who are recovering. The hospital saying that they remain hopeful for their complete recoveries. There are additional patients, patients at other hospitals. There was a total of 10 who were transported on Saturday night to the hospital. So hopefully we'll get some more details on how their recovery is going. But in the meantime, Hallie, more questions that we are hoping police will answer uh, about this uh, suspect and what might have precipitated this. And just in the last hour or so, we heard from police in Hemet, California, which is a couple hours from here, but is uh, where this suspect had been living. There was a mobile home that he uh, lived in that was searched uh, under a search warrant uh, following this situation playing out. Uh, and we're now hearing from police here that this was not their first encounter with him. They say that on January 7th and January 9th of this month, so not that long ago, he came to the police station. Uh, alleging that there were uh, that family members of his were committing fraud, theft, and even trying to poison him, and that that had occurred uh, 10 to 20 years ago. The police obviously asked for more information. He said he would return uh, to the police station with that information. He apparently did not end up uh, returning, but that sort of speaks to uh, perhaps his mindset in the days uh, leading up to this. The key question that this community has that they are hoping police will be able to answer as well as the governor and other officials there. Why did this happen? What was the motive? We've heard some local officials uh, talking about what they're hearing, that there could have been some connection to a domestic violence or to uh, a domestic partner from the past or from the present that he uh, was targeting. But so far, we have not heard law enforcement come out and confirm uh, those reports. And so that is uh, really the top question as we wait to see uh, what Governor Newsom and those officials will have to say about this investigation.